Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode of Drop Recaps. Today, we will be discussing the Yeezy 350 Zion release. Specifically, in this series, we will cover some of the most hype drops of the year, no matter how hectic or mundane they may be. Throughout the video, we will first cover how each site with decent stock dropped the product from most popular to the audience to least non-chronological. We will only mention sites with decent stock in consideration of your time and what manual exploits or tips worked compared to what didn't. and what bots work most efficiently, and some setup tips for them. Then finally, we will be going over resale of the product post drop in comparison to what was expected, in addition to whether holding or selling as soon as possible will be the most profitable. Feel free to subscribe and enable post notifications just to stay 100% updated on all hyped upcoming releases. We will use these videos as learning experiences, so whether you took an L or W, you will always come away with at least something. Even if the glass isn't half full sometimes, guys, or at least have the glass itself, and that is knowledge. Please also drop in the comments below how you performed on this drop, whether it was a W or L, and what sites you copped on, and any specific tips you thought may have helped. This way, the community will be of use as well for this series. Without hesitation, let's jump right into this and kick it off with foot sites. What's new? Starting with how manual went right from the get-go. No matter how fast people were, it was near impossible to cart right off the bat. Numerous errors trying to cart initially, but those who persisted did end up seeing success. Remember, persistence. Consistency is absolutely key for foot sites. I mentioned in the how to cop guide to ensure that you didn't give up on foot sites since people often cop as late as 40 minutes into the drop. This was certainly evident on this release. In fact, the vast majority of manual checkouts were about 20 to 30 minutes into the drop, not even right off the bat. That's why I keep on telling you there's certain sites you should focus on at exactly 7 a.m. or hypothetically if it's another drop, exactly at 10 a.m. There's certain drops you should focus on and then there's other drops where it's more about the persistency rather than being as fast as possible. Regarding how bots performed on this drop and which bots performed the best, it was extremely similar to how the past few foot sites drops have been. The essential takeaway here is to make sure you purchase plenty of residential data for very hype drops like this with very high stock since the drops do tend to last a very decent amount of time and of course continue running throughout the entire drop until it's completely out of stock. Also, don't be afraid to stop and restart tasks every once in a while, especially when you do see checkouts pop up at certain times. Now, regarding which bots performed the best overall, again, it's been pretty consistently the same over the past few releases, but there were three bots in particular I did want to mention today. Let's start with the ones that aren't those three though. Starting it off, Cyber did have some issues checking out on certain products the night before the drop. However, when some smoke rays restocked the day before they caught the issue and they resolved it before the drop of the Zions which was great when the Zions did end up dropping they did perform decently well however unfortunately they did have a little bit of a cookie distribution issue or a cookie generation issue so that did affect the vast amount of success that they normally get and that's why it wasn't as large but regardless they still did have very good success moving on to project destroyer they finally have went cookieless right before the Zion drop which was absolutely incredible this is a huge deal because PD is an incredible foot sites bot but the only downside was having to generate or buy your own cookies. Now, they're the same beast, the only difference is they're providing you cookies. Then moving on to some others, Whatbot, Wrath, Toru, Phantom, and Ganesh all performed very well, just like on the Smoke Gray drop, nothing new there. Now moving on to the standout bots that I really did want to mention today, one of these three standout bots was Koda. Not only did they hit a new record for the number of checkouts, despite a small hiccup at the beginning of the drop, but other than that, what really stood out and what's making all these other bots stick out that I'm about to mention is the fact that they put in some effort to combat the payment verification cancels. They did this by implementing a new PayPal mode. This is absolutely huge and it worked perfectly. The reason this is so important is because it's one of the few consistent ways to avoid payment verification cancels on foot sites. So definitely a big props to Kodai for adding this and I truly do hope that more bots begin to start taking action when it comes to things like this. Now just like Kodai, TKS also performed incredibly on this foot sites drop just like many previous foot sites drop. It's a very consistent foot sites bot. However, the main thing that's making it stick out here just like Kodai, TKS also implemented a user checkout mode to combat the payment verification cancels, which is absolutely incredible. They were actually the first to take action on this before the smoke gray drop, which has been working perfectly as well. It's highly suggested you take advantage of these if you are getting payment verification cancels. Not to mention, TKS has always had a checkout proxy list separate from the monitor proxy list, which could allow for local checkouts or binded proxy checkouts to also avoid payment verification cancels, both of which have been working very 
very well. And on to the last stand now bot, which has sort of been unintentional and completely irrelevant to the recent updates actually, and this is NSB. To preface this, NSB has had a great performance as well, but what makes it stand out is the fact that they have a browser mode, which also has been great for avoiding payment verification cancel. So if you log into an account and then you log into your Chrome browser, by doing it this way, you can avoid that payment verification cancel, whether you use PayPal or not. But anyway, overall, I wanted to say that no foot sites bot ended up flopping. They all ended up performing very well and very consistent actually, which is great to hear. However, I did feel it was very important to note those three standout bots because hopefully eventually more bots will begin to start taking intentional action when it comes to these payment verification camps. So I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. Hopefully more begin to add in things like this. Moving on to Finish Line and JD Sports. Unlike the Smoke Gray drop, manual users actually saw more success on Finish Line this drop. Although it was still extremely frustrating because there were lots of IP bans and more importantly, they did put a permanent queue up for a decent amount of time. Nowhere near as bad as the Smoke Gray drop was, but it was still pretty awful. It was going in and out of permanent queue, non-permanent queue. So obviously the Finish Line and JD Sports releases recently have been absolutely brutal to have to deal with and obviously it wastes a lot of our residential data perhaps that's even intentional on there and if they know that we're using residential proxies and we're burning a lot of data maybe it's some type of incentive to get people to stop botting them kind of a poor strategy on their end because obviously people aren't just going to magically stop botting because they lose a few dollars from data but i mean we certainly are losing a lot of money from it so props to them i guess you you guys win but anyway, aside from that tangent, I just went on. One major takeaway is that IP bans have been much heavier and consistent, so I would only suggest using one single Chrome user on JD and Finish Line unless you are using a proxy switcher or another device on LTE. Regarding bots, the top performers seem to be Phantom, Kodai, PD, Soul, and Rush as well. Galaxy IO has been doing very well recently as well. However, when I did check out their Twitter page, because I'm not in their Discord, unfortunately, I don't own Galaxy IO, but when I was checking them out, I did notice that they did didn't retweet any success. Now, I don't personally know if the person in charge of the Twitter account just wasn't active today or yesterday as I'm making the video, or if they actually didn't have any success. So if there are any owners watching the video right now, please leave in the comments below how it did perform. It will help out the rest of the community. Cyber has been performing very well on Finish Line and JD, but this drop specifically, again, like I mentioned earlier, they did have a cookie related issue that I'm sure they have already resolved. But regardless, their mobile mode still worked completely fine, and that's why they still had pretty good success when it came to finish line. Anyone who was running desktop mode, a vast majority of those people didn't see nearly the same amount of success in comparison to the people running the mobile module. Now with those out of the way, let's move on to Shopify. This drop, we actually saw a decent bit of manual success, which was really nice to see from Shopify. A lot of this derived from Kith because they recently added a cart property that only several Shopify sites already have. Unfortunately though, if any bots were unprepared for this, it's certainly not a difficult fix. They've done it before for those other sites. So likely we won't be seeing this very high volume of manual success on Kith again, but it was very nice while it lasts. Manual is still going to be very possible, of course, but this drop in particular was very, very easy when it came to Kith. Then, of course, there were other sites as well that were possible manually, such as DTLR, Jimmy Jazz, and Concepts. Not because of what I just mentioned for Kith, but just simply because they usually do get pretty good stock, and you do tend to see at least some manual success when it comes to those sites. Those, I would say, are my altogether four favorite manual Shopify sites. Over Overall, for Shopify regarding bot performances, it's been pretty consistent the past few drops. It's been the top performance pretty consistently from the last month or so that have been all up there, including Wrath, Cyber, NSB, and Kodai. Balco and PD actually recently pushed a really big Shopify update several weeks ago, and that of which has been incredible for their success on Shopify. If you don't remember, before Balco was having some slight issues when it came to bot protected sites, but they did end up bouncing back several weeks ago, and they've still been consistent. Then when it comes to Project Destroyer, same situation. They haven't really been doing too good all around on Shopify before that update that took place, but when they did make that update several weeks ago, their Shopify success has shot through the roof exponentially. One major tip, which is the same I mentioned on the last drop recaps video, just because I really can't emphasize this enough if you are botting Shopify, I would highly, highly suggest investing in capture tools and prime Gmails to help you with the checkpoints. Although it is not possible to get a one click on the checkpoint, you are going 
going to be able to avoid those brutal fading captures and with those fading captures I mean that's that's whether you get the pair or not whether you get that fading capture or not that is the difference maker right there that's why it's so important that you do invest some resources into these captures moving on to Hibbit this used to be a really great site for manual users initially however the last couple of drops haven't been too great just because bots have been performing better and better specifically the standout bot when it comes to here on initial drops would have to be sold but when it comes to restocks as well phantom and project destroyer do pretty well as well if you're using data center proxy however although manual is kind of a struggle when it comes to the initial drop when it does come to the restocks there is significantly less traffic obviously nowhere near as many people running so you are able to see some really great success manually when it comes to those restocks so if any of you guys do have access to a hibbit monitor make sure you're taking advantage of it because you can get a lot of manual success on there especially with man especially if you have apple pay as well regarding foot locker europe this was absolutely the worst drop they've ever done for manual users and I feel like I say this every single drop over and over again like somehow it just keeps on getting worse and worse I can't it's absolutely pathetic not only is manual normally hard now but they actually permanently queued all desktop users for 95% of the droppers so so that really makes absolutely no sense however when I did come to the new Foot Locker Europe sites the ones that are very similar to the US foot sites that you're used to those of which manual users were actually able to see at least some decent and success on. I would expect that in the coming months or so, eventually all of Foot Locker Europe will be shifted to that same type of platform, will be shifted to that same type of US foot site. But unfortunately now, it's not the case. We're still gonna have to put up with these absolutely terrible drops for Europe. Regarding the best bots, I would say Ganesh was certainly the top performer when it came to Foot Locker. Regarding Kicks and SVD, Orbit performed extremely well on there. Unfortunately, no manual success. You'll notice these next few Europe sites wasn't really great manual opportunities, but there were some standout bots. For example, the next one regarding Courier, Snipes, AW Lab, and even 43 and Hob, Flair, and Fleek performed very well on these drops. And then finally, for Shoe Palace, manual is always possible. It just takes a lot of persistency, takes a lot of time, but it certainly is possible. But Launcher and Phantom really did stand out in this drop. They both had incredible performances, and I would expect that this is going to continue. Anyway, last but certainly not least, in fact, the most popular, I saved this best one for last, and that would be Yeezy Supply. As expected, manual users saw decent success here, mainly just because of the very high stock. Unlike the MNVN drop, which was absolutely terrible, the majority of success I saw was from people who logged into their Gmails, which I explained in the recent had a cop guide. So if you didn't see that, I would highly suggest checking that out for future Adidas or Yeezy supply drops. Regarding bots, Splash Force once again absolutely dominated this release. It was incredible. But regardless of that, there was still very, very good success when it came to Project Destroyer, Phantom, Wrath, Kodai and NSB. But anyway, that will conclude it for the site release recaps. Now let's move on to the resale. And to preface this, was this expected? The turnout of the resale, was this exactly expected for how they would turn out? And yes, just like I mentioned in the had a cop guide, all sizes would be profitable. And evidently, as you could see, although the profit isn't a ridiculous margin, you still are able to make some easy money off of any size, whether they are big or small. And as expected, again, the smaller sizes under eight do have the best margin. So pretty much played out exactly how it was expected. Even though there was extremely high stock, the demand outweighed it. Now, whether you should hold or sell them is highly dependent on your capital situation for this drop specifically because I do expect these to rise but not by a significant amount over time so first of all you should expect a marginal price drop over the next few weeks as more pairs go into circulation however overall I do expect a decent rise in price over the next four to six months which isn't too long actually the only thing that I'm not expecting is like I said a massive rise especially in large sizes so the best to hold would definitely ideal be sizes underneath eight so if you do need capital for other drops sell as soon as possible because obviously prices are going to continue to drop over these next few weeks just a marginal drop nothing too crazy but if you don't need capital at all if you have plenty of capital and you won't need to worry about any extra funds when it comes to future releases then definitely go ahead and hold these because they are going to eventually rise very similar to what we saw with the cinder drop and perhaps eventually just like what we saw with the static drop so it's not an incredible rise 
guys, specifically just because there's so much stock on these. Anyway, that will conclude it for today. If you guys do need any verified sneakers accounts or verified Adidas accounts, feel free to check out the link in the description to my site, TARS. Also, feel free to leave a like if you did enjoy or you perhaps learned a thing or two. Also, remember guys, leave a comment down below on how you performed and exactly how you copped, what sites you copped off of. With that though, make sure you subscribe and enable post notifications just to stay 100% updated on all hyped upcoming releases. Anyway, have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you guys later.